I was listening to an aquarium co-op live stream and I happened to hear Corey say how hard it is to find yellow community fish. Challenge accepted. You guys are in luck because I happen to be going through my top five picks for nano fish of every color of the rainbow. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips on nano fish and planted aquariums. And back when I was a beginner, I had the brilliant idea to fill a 20 gallon tank with fish of every color of the rainbow. So I put in a flame dwarf gourami, orange bone balloon molly, and then for yellow, I decided to go with fricata rainbow fish. The reason why I first got these fork tail blue eyed rainbow fish is because, well, A, I really like rainbow fish for their speed and their color, but B, this species has these yellow tipped fins and bright blue eyes. I really love their adorable yellow tipped pectoral fins so that when they swim around, it looks like they're frantically waving pom poms. So cute. Pseudomogial rainbowfish tend to only get about two inches or five centimeters long. So because they're so active though, I tend to like to give them at least 15 to 20 gallons or more just to give them more room to move and groove. They make a great schooling fish for the upper half of your aquarium, but the females are a little duller in color, but make sure to get more girls than boys because then the boys will really show off their breeding colors. And then I love to see that sparring behavior as they show off to the girls as they circle around each other. Be aware though that they don't live very long, maybe two to three years. However, they are easy to breed. So make sure you get some of those spawning mops so that the females can swim in them, lay their eggs. You can take the eggs out and then raise those tiny fry up. If you can't find any fricatas in your area, you can try looking for other pseudomogial rainbow fish that are kind of yellowish, like the Gertrude's spotted blue-eyed rainbow fish, as well as the red neon rainbow fish sometimes have yellowish varieties. The second yellow fish I ever got is the honey gourami. Now I just covered it in my centerpiece video, which you can see over here. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but basically honey gouramis come in several varieties. Since we're talking about yellow fish, you want to go for the yellow gold variety where the male is more colorful and looks kind of like a, a sunshine yellow. They also get to about two inches or five centimeters long, but unlike the fricatas, they have this more wider oblong body. So kind of like a wide cruise ship versus a slim torpedo like the fricatas. They're pretty peaceful fish. Some people would call them shy, but in my experience, as long as you don't have any semi-aggressive bullies in the tank, mine were swimming out and about all the time. Because they're so good nature, you can really keep any number of them. You can keep one, a pair of them, six of them. It doesn't really matter. If you want to try your hand at breeding, I would say it's definitely worth it. They have interesting bubble nester behavior. The only caveat is the fry are really, really tiny and need infusoria to live. So check out my breeding how to video over here. Number three on our list is the lemon tetra. It is a South American schooling fish that doesn't seem to be as popular nowadays. Like I don't see a lot of people keeping them in their aquariums, probably because if you go to the pet store or fish store and see them, usually they're juveniles, which are smaller and kind of more paler silvery in color. Versus if you take them home, feed them really well, the adults turn this beautiful translucent yellow color with a bright, bold red eye. And then the fins have this black and yellow marking on it that's very distinctive. They only get to about mm, 1.6 inches long. So I would say get six or more of them, not only because obviously they'll be more comfortable in a school, but also more of them will give you that greater yellow presence in your aquarium. They're a great hardy beginner fish. Care requirements are pretty similar to any other tropical schooling fish like a neon tetra or a lamb chop resbora. Feed them pretty much any kind of community omnivore food and they'll do fine. They swim roughly around the middle of the aquarium, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. So if it were me, I would pair it with some kind of other contrasting colored fish, like maybe a powder blue gourami, preferably female, so she won't be as much of a bully, or a super red bristlenose pleco that's down below. 
If you're looking for an option that isn't a fish, let's talk about an invertebrate, the gold Inca snail, which is basically a fancy name for the super bright yellow mystery snail. So it has that bright yellow shell, kind of a creamy colored foot, and of course they're known for their very long antennae. Now they get about, I would say two inches long or wide, very, very peaceful, but you don't want to keep them with other snail eating animals like certain loaches, pufferfish, so on and so forth. This is a great scavenger or cleanup crew member, especially for eating, I would say leftover fish food that's on the ground or biofilm. They're probably not the best algae eater in the world. I mean, they will go after some of the softer types of algae. They'll definitely eat any vegetables you put in the aquarium, as well as decaying plant matter or melted leaves in the aquarium. So they should be safe for your live plants, at least from what I've seen. As with most invertebrates, you want to make sure to have high mineral content in that water of yours. If you have soft tap water like me, definitely make sure to add crushed coral, wonder shell, maybe a big old jar of sea chem equilibrium like I have here, or else you might get kind of pits and cracks and weakness in their shell. Another thing you can do is to feed them mineral enriched foods that are meant for other invertebrates, such as hikari, crab cuisine, or shrimp foods, that kind of thing. In terms of breeding, you're in luck. Mystery snails cannot breed asexually. You need at least one male, one female. And then if you drop the water line by a couple of inches, the female will crawl out of the water. So make sure you have that tight aquarium lid. She will lay a clutch of eggs here. And then it's up to you if you want to leave them in the aquarium. Um, if there are predators, you might want to take that out, put it in a moist container to hatch. Um, if you don't want baby snails, of course, you can always remove Move the egg clutch and you won't have any problems there. Of course, I couldn't end our list on yellowfish without mentioning a live bear, specifically the Cobra Endler's live bear. The first time I saw them was in Petco and they were actually named Cobra Endler's Guppies, which is kind of interesting, but I, mean, I guess it kind of makes sense because it's definitely a hybrid of some sort. This is not a naturally occurring look, but I fell in love with that beautiful yellow pattern, like lace-like patterning. I'm not sure quite how to explain it, but I guess it kind of looks like snake skin a little bit, hence the name Cobra. Like most live bears, they're very energetic and lively, easy to feed, easy to breed. I mean, as long as you have females. So for some reason, when I go to a PetSmart or Petco, I only see males sold because I guess the females are duller in color. But if you want to breed them, you may have to go online to order some or maybe talk to your local fish store and see if they can order some in. They'll pretty much eat anything, whether it's frozen, flakes, freeze-dried. They'll also eat their own fry. So if you want to increase that survival rate, definitely co create lots of cover for them, whether it's floating plants with really long roots, lots of dense java moss, guppy grass, of course. And then if you're getting too many babies and you want to minimize or control that population, just take out some of that control and the adults will help you out there. Endler's live bears, of course, appreciate that harder GH content. So again, if you have soft water like me, make sure to add plenty of minerals. And then there are lots of specialized foods that are enriched in calcium, like Hikari Fancy Guppy is what I use. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite yellow nano fish is that people need to try. And then if you're looking for a fish of a different color, check out my playlist over here. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video.